The developers of Cyberpunk 2077 finally made up their mind to show the gameplay demo from E3 to the general public. And that means it's time to review it objectively on the subject of conformity to the original source, the board game Cyberpunk 2020. But I won't touch the little things like corporation names, but speak about something that really matters. Go. Let's start from a character generation menu, and specifically the characteristics. There are six of them in the shown demo – strength, constitution, intelligence, reflexes, tech skills, and so-called cool, which actually denotes not your appearance, but a composure and willpower. And in the board game there were nine characteristics, where strength and constitution were merged into a single parameter, called body type. That's to say that the developers cut out four characteristics during the adaptation of the board game. They are empathy, attractiveness, movement allowance and luck. The last two are not so important, because movement allowance is easy to be tied up with reflexes, and luck could just add you some points to a critically important dice roll. Empathy and attractiveness were responsible for almost all social interactions. For example, in a case of a hero was being tortured or was intimidating someone himself, the most important role in it would take composure, but diplomacy, negotiation and the ability to attract and get someone's trust – all these were tied up to empathy and attractiveness. Of course, the fact these parameters were cut out from Cyberpunk doesn't mean there will be no diplomacy at all. But it gives us a small reason to be worried. All the more so, there are not so many answer options in the shown gameplay demo. I asked if you came alone. Yep, just little old me. She's lying. But there is one more thing related to empathy. The thing is that in cyberpunk world implants can literally turn a human to a machine. The more cyber devices you got inside, the less you value a human life. And in the worst cases, a hero can catch a cyber psychosis and start to slay everyone around. And the derivative of empathy named humanity cost has been describing in the board game how many cyber implants will character be able to install before getting mentally sick. There's no empathy in Cyberpunk 2077, but humanity remains. When V came to the doctor for an upgrade, there was a separate humanity cost for every new upgrade along with the price in euro dollars, but there'll be no possibility to get to cyber psychosis, according to what the developers have said in interviews. We will meet some cyber psychos in the game, maybe even have to catch some, but we won't be able to become one of them. Because this will make it impossible for the hero to experiment properly with cyber implants. For the same reason, the level of character's cyborgization will hardly affect the available options in dialogues. Though the studio never get tired of reminding that the work on Cyberpunk 2077 is still in progress. So it's possible that creators can make a choice not in favor of player's freedom, but in favor of atmosphere and the traditions of the board game. There is one important moment when talking about cyberization, which makes a serious difference between the new cyberpunk and the source. The fact is that, in the board game, we have paid for implants not only by humanity, but also by the blood. Only small operations like subcutaneous monitor installation were going quick and painless, but the heroin has got an eye replaced and an implant in the palm. According to the rules of the board game, it would require six hours of painstaking surgeon's work and several days for V to spend on recovery and adaptation. Of course, if the heroine's eyes and arms were already fully mechanical, there wouldn't be a problem to upgrade them. Just like a replacement of a video card in a computer. But there is another moment in it. She went not to an official clinic to install the implants, but to an illegal ripper dock. In the world of cyberpunk, ripper dogs are known for dubious moral integrity and even more dubious standards of quality. For instance, they can improperly connect a cyber device with a nervous system. Or an implant bought on a black market can be defective. Also with an implant, a ripper dog can insert a small present like a bomb with a remote detonator to make sure the client, which has taken a credit, will pay off his debts. However, the implants with surprises can be installed even in the official clinic if a patient has some powerful enemy. 
In a word, the process of turning to a cyborg was far from that quick and easy in the board game, as it represented in the video game. What about the combat system? The verdict is clear, not a cannon. In the board, cyberpunk firefights have been tough and swift, and those who hit an enemy first has got victory most often, because a bullet hit not only caused the loss of health, but also added serious penalties to characteristics, or at worst could simply send a character to pain shock. Of course, you always should have taken a weapon caliber and a target's armor into account. It's been pointless to shoot heavily armored special forces by a pistol, because all the damage would be absorbed by armor. But when you took some more serious gun with armor-piercing ammo equipped, then even the most protected enemy could be laid down just by one turn. That's why the main protection in the board game was not a body armor, but the stealth, mobility and lightning reflexes. Especially since the injuries could not be easily healed in a couple of seconds, a field medic could stop the bleeding, inject a painkiller or not let the dying draw his lost breath. But the recovery of lost hit points would be worth the patient a week in a hospital. But there are no such problems with health in the computer cyberpunk. It regenerates rather quick even in fight. Or if V drinks cola or uses a medicinal inhaler, the healing process will go faster. So we may say that the combat system of Cyberpunk 2077 is much closer to action RPG like Borderlands rather than to board game origin. The wide variety of weapons also reminds of Borderlands, though in the final game we'll hardly be finding rare and badass guns at every step. The shown guns make it clear that the developers don't limit their imagination. In the board game, lasers have been very rare and impractical weapon, which must be recharged after every two shots. But in Cyberpunk 2077 they are to be normal weapon for high-level enemies. Well, of course, there is nothing to mention about shotguns or smart rifles with self-directed bullets. Jesus Christ! My legs. And in the end, let's take a look at the moment which provoked most disturbance after E3 trailer. The fact that action in Cyberpunk 2077 takes place not only at night, but also in the daytime. The fans of the genre have stated that in the true cyberpunk there can be nothing but a night only, but the creators of the board game do not agree with them. In the classic book of rules of cyberpunk 2020, which is taken as a basis, there is clearly described all of the night city's life by night and day. So in this matter, the creators of the game respect the canon very much. Nonetheless, orthodox fans of the board game won't be satisfied by the computer adaptation most likely. There's been too much sacrificed in the brutal and dramatic cyberpunk universe to make the game process dynamic and comfortable. But on the other hand, these are simplifications that allow Cyberpunk 2077 become popular in the white player communities. So don't forget to write in the comments what you think about all this. And of course don't forget to press like and subscribe to the channel so not to miss the next video on Cyberpunk 2077. And see you next time!